Hey everyone, this is Fabio and welcome back and today we're going to do a new game discussion video on the latest game that I beat which is Killzone Mercenary on the PS Vita, a first person shooter part of the Killzone series which I have to be completely honest, I actually never um, get into it. I always know about it, I always knew about it and um, but never really had the chance to explore it, mainly because like the first game or games, I'm not entirely sure either, um, were developed for the PS2 and at the time I didn't own a PS2, I was a original Xbox um, kid and I don't think I'm really ignorant on this series actually now that I think about it. I don't think however, I'm pretty sure, but I might be wrong, who knows. I don't think that the series um, was brought uh, brought to the Xbox. I think that probably for like multi-platform uh, entries in the series we have to wait at least the next generation with PS3 and 360. Mercenary on the other hand, it's one of the latest actually game in the series. I know there's one on the PS4, um, but still I haven't had the chance to play it. But I have to say, because of Mercenary now, I'm really curious about the Killzone series because this game was so much fun. It's nothing more at the moment than a pure palate cleanser for me after having played so many RPGs one after the other. I mean, basically since the beginning of the year I've been playing RPGs. I've been playing uh, Trails in the Sky Second Chapter, Trails of Cold Steel, The Three Golden Sun. Now it's really time for a change, even though I love RPGs, but oh, I just need a break from them. Because interestingly enough, I started Mercenary in December, I think, um, and played most of it. But then the second chapter was released, and of course that game took priority over everything that I was doing, so I decided, well, let's take a break from Killzone, I'll finish second chapter and start over and continue it afterwards. Of course then Tears of Cold Steel was released, and then I started to play Golden Suns and the rest is history. <laughs> now I say, alright, I need to finish Mercenary because one, it's a really good and fun first person shooter, and two, I really need a break from all these RPGs. So. What is the story of Killzone Mercenary? Well, I have to say, maybe in a way it's the weakest element of the game, but not entirely negative. Basically, the story it's, uh, I'm not very familiar, as I said, uh, about the Killzone universe, but there is a massive war going on between two factions. One, I think it's called the Hellcast, and there you go, just reading behind to avoid a stupid mistake, and the other, the ISA. And I have to say, since I first killed Zone for the first time on the PS2 and now playing an actual game, maybe it's just me, but these games have a strong, like, alternative sci fi ish World War II feel to them. I mean, the hell just, just looked like some sort of space marine Nazis. They really looked like Nazis to me. And um, so, like, the ISA maybe are a sort of allies. Um, but there, there was this feeling while I was playing it that made it very fascinating to me, since I'm a huge fan of history. Well, I am an historian, so um, this sort of alternative and sci-fi setting for an alternative World War II uh, storyline felt really good to me. It's uh, something that really made me curious about this game. But then there is, of course, the fact that you play in this game specifically as a mercenary, and at the beginning of the game you're hired by the ISA, um, who initially is in experiencing difficulties during the war. So, of course, like just a band of mercenary, it's enough to <laughs> turn the... the entire conflict in favor of one or the other um, armies. That was a bit exaggerated to say, but hey, it's a video game, it's not real war, of course. But um, 
it is cool to play as a mercenary and it also connected with of course like how much so much fun the gameplay was but we'll talk about that in a moment the thing that I uh, kind of disappointed me a bit or at least that I felt it was a bit uncompleted was actually when you switch sides it's maybe a bit of a spoiler but the title says mercenary so a mercenary it's not a soldier loyal to a specific cause it's a soldier that it's a soldier who is hired by different armies and he gets paid he doesn't care about the cause he just fight for money as we all know so at one moment you switch sides but I think it was too too not really too soon because it's it, there is this halfway point when you join the the other side but the way it's done it kind of makes sense also because you're kind of kidnapped these are not huge spoilers I'm not talking how it happened or why it happened and just vaguely say that since you're a mercenary you might switch side uh, hopefully it's not too much of a spoiler but um, the thing that I wanted if you had actually the choice because it is true that you're a mercenary, you fight for money or, or and everything like that. But I would have prefer like after the mission, you receive the offer from this like, hey, we're going to pay you a lot of money, join us. And so, oh, that's that's cool. But also the others are say, whoa, 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 wait a second. Uh, we are giving like double their money if you stay with us because you're we value your combat skills or something like that and then you can make a decision to join one or the other it would have been interesting also in terms of story development to me but it didn't happen uh, because basically then you switch side again in a way kinda but it's the same it's I, it, I, it felt kind of forced to me but overall it's the story I think it's not the real reason why to play this game um, even though it's kind of interesting but not developed enough to me um, as I said this lack of choices since I mean it's something important that you decided to stay with one or join another force so they should have they should have done something more about that and that's the I all constantly have this in the back of my ha mind while playing it I was like yes that's cool but I would have preferred something a bit deeper than this but um, but let's move to the other and the main reason to play this game and that is the gameplay of course this game is awesome in terms of a first-person shooter I think this is the best the Vita has to offer at the moment and like I had so much fun it controls perfectly um, you have a lot of a massive selection of weapons which are not too futuristic um, and uh, you can hold a main weapon usually a some machine gun or assault rifle something like that uh, you can have silencers or something like that then you have secondary weapons like pistols shotguns rocket launchers stuff like that really cool uh, like for example in my case I always had for the most part a silenced uh, SMG with a shotgun so I was because one thing that I loved in this game was sneaking up against enemy soldiers and assassinate them I love that because you get a lot of money first of all so you can buy equipment and blah 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 but it was so cool like the animations and also because um, Melee in this game also uses a lot uh, the touchscreens of the Vita, which is very cool. This game utilizes pretty well the Vita, I think. Apparently, I didn't, but you can also use the tilt control to... Well, it makes sense. Probably you move the Vita to aim your gun better. But, for example, the touchscreens were fundamentally if you want to kill an enemy um, with your knife, for example. Um, and not to mention speaking about the Vita that this game was like graphically really good I think but because the gameplay as I said it's the main reason but it's also very simple it's a first-person shooter but not too much to say about it but it felt very good it controls perfectly due to the amazing design on the Vita contrary to the PSP 
since it has two sticks. So it, when the left stick you control your character, Danner is called this mercenary, and with the right stick you move the camera. So it proves that every single console needs two sticks, especially for first-person shooter. I cannot even imagine a first-person shooter on the PSP. I don't. I don't. Honestly, I don't know if there is even one on the PSP because with that design it cannot work I think and we saw that with a lot of third person shooter or action game um, since they uses the d-pad to move the camera while you move the character with the stick and they're both on the same side of the PSP and that it's a very stupid design but back to mercenary so from a, also, from a technical point of view, this game was very good, I think. In terms of music, it's okay. It was nothing mind-blowing, since, again, it's a first-person shooter, and it's not that I was expecting an amazing soundtrack. And also, for the, I also have to be honest, like I play 90% of this game in December, and I just finished basically the two final missions now. So I said, oh, okay, I finished it. So I don't remember most of the music. But um, it was okay for the most part. Like um, also, it was for the most part quite. The volume of the music and shooting was very high, so you can barely hear like anyone talking to you. But pff, I didn't care. <laughs> I just shoot uh, shoot at everything in size in size to me and just kill everybody and. <laughs> It was so much fun. I mean, but that's the reason why I played this game. Um, it's a, a, an amazingly fun game for the Vita, which I really needed as like a break from my RPG madness recently. But it's a really good one. I cannot recommend this enough. If you have a Vita, I think you should definitely check Killzone Mercenary. Um, Honestly, I haven't touched the multiplayer in this game because I'm sure there is there are functions like trade or do, um, do missions together maybe or that matches and stuff like that. I haven't touched it because I, I don't really care honestly and for the moment I just want to finish the campaign and I might even play the campaign not once entirely but maybe individual missions since some of them were very fun more than others um, but in general there's not much to say I think because also the Vita doesn't have many first-person shooters I mean the, the big ones are this and resistance burning skies but I heard that that one it's not good mainly in terms of controlling its controllers it's not very good to me, Mercenary played perfectly, it looked very good, and the shooting was great. One thing that, another small complaint I have to say, I thought this game was extremely easy. I mean, I died, of course, a couple of times, but before you are actually killed by the enemy, the, the amount of damage that you can take, it's staggering. Maybe it depends on the armor or something like that, maybe, but... At that level, and it's like, it's like, good grief, they just can't kill me, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm not the best first-person shooter player anymore, also because I've never been too much into the serious first-person shooters. Like, my cup of tea in terms of FPSs are always been the id software games or Halo. I mean, I grew up playing Wolfenstein and Quake and Doom, and then I discovered... Well, um, Halo and these games were fantastic, but I've never been into the Call of Duties or Battlefield. I mean, I have played it. the first, the first, maybe even the second Call of Duty on PC, maybe. But I played the first, which was like based in World War II, and it was a lot of fun. I remember playing the first Medal of Honor on PS1. That was great. Like the, that was for me the first first-person shooter on console that I ever played and it was great. Um, but I like this I like the genre. So here and there I would love to play some good first person shooters. But the Vita doesn't offer too much. I think I got the best one already. Uh, we'll see in the future. Mm, but 
I really think that this is an absolute must if you own a Vita. And I think... I don't remember which YouTuber talked very well of this. Mm. In my mind, I have both Steven the Lucky Gamer and Bruno SNES Mapper, uh, but I'm not entirely sure where they were the only ones. So for the moment, a big shout out to both of them, and a big thank you since they allowed me to discover this amazing and super fun game. It's, it's so happy to have it in my collection, and I don't know the prices for this because for quite a while this was quite pricey, which is a shame. And it, but that's a common problem with Vita games these days. I mean, mo for the most part, they're quite pricey for what they are, and that's annoying because I would like to increase my Vita collection. But, I mean, first of all, the RPGs are always very expensive. Then the good games are quite expensive. Then there's all the crap shopware like the sports game and Minecraft games and crap like that. They're super cheap, on the other hand, there's a flood of those. <sighs> so unfortunately I don't know if you can get this game on the cheap but you absolutely need to play this because it's a super fun game I mean those complaints that I had I mean the difficulty I, I'm sure and probably if I increase it because I think I play on normal or something like that so we we'll have to consider that uh, so, and it's not a complaint, it's just something that I noticed, especially during the final battle, that you are on this moving sort of platform, flying platform, with seven, seven enemies coming at you, and you just have to run around, kill them, and something, but sometimes I was, like, completely surrounded, but I, was, I never died, I beat the final challenge on the first trial, and I'm not complaining, I was just there, wow, this is pretty easy. I'm sure if I played on like pure evil or something like that, it would be more challenging. But we'll see in the future. And the story, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I liked it for what it was. It was nothing too deep, but hey, this is a first person shooter, it's not an RPG. But just the, that little detail to me would have made it much better. I mean, the possibility of having more freedom of choice when you have to select sides. Maybe even from the beginning, since you're mercenary, when you're hired by... when you're hired, it will be interesting to see which one is the best offer. To uh, will make the game much bigger also, in a way. I mean... Because it's true that you receive money so you can buy weapons, but it will be interesting to have a, like more interesting stuff. Um, and different stories according to the side that you decide to uh, fight for. But apart from that, that's maybe if they will ever make a mercenary too, they could do like that because it would be more interesting, I think. But for the most part, for what we had, it's a great first-person shooter on the Vita, which I cannot recommend enough, as I already said. And I have. To great credit, however, that now I'm really curious about Killzone, because this setting was very cool. Um, yeah, uh, the Helgas really look like Nazis. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say now at this point, because uh, I'm looking at the cover, there are all these really evil-looking enemies, which really look like space Nazis to me. So, <laughs> that's it for Killzone Mercenary, a fantastic, super fun first-person shooter on the Vita, which is an absolute must for your collections. So much fun, so much fun. Unfortunately, uh, this game will not be uh, on my list of the games of 2016, when later this year I will do my list of the games, uh, of my favorite games of this year, because I already put it in my last year's list. Even though I didn't finish it, but I, I played most of it, I decided to include it there. So, when I'll make my list in December or January, uh, Killzone will not be on it, but I just wanted to finish it, because I knew, and I, I felt and knew, and then their game proved me right, that I was really, really close to the end. So, um, it's not that 
it's a huge uh, deal to remove it, but still, small curiosity there for future videos. That's it, guys. Thanks so very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Play Killzone Mercenary. It's so much fun. Uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.